big contender with restaurant. You know, we joke around, we say, hey, you know, if, if you would have arrested him, maybe he wouldn't have done what he's doing now, but you never know. It will still be weeks before LaBarbie is extradited back home to the United States, but it will be the very opposite of a triumphant homecoming. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Laredo, Texas. So how does a guy go from a middle-class suburban upbringing in Texas to becoming an alleged cocaine kingpin in Mexico? Well, Fred Burton is the vice president of counterterrorism and corporate security for Stratfor, a global intelligence company. He is the author of the best-selling book as well, Ghost, Confessions of a Counterterrorism Agent. Fred Burton joins us now from Austin, Texas. Thanks, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Fre Fred, uh, you know, LaBarbie, La um, as you heard Gary's report, apparently LaBarbie's the only American citizen known to have moved so high in the command structure of the Mexican cartels. Um, wh why do you think that's the first time that, that, that happened? Well, what made him special? It's truly an amazing story. I mean, this is a kid that appeared to have everything going for him uh, in Laredo, comes from a pretty good family, has uh, siblings that are very, very successful. And I think things went bad for him after this car crash and uh, hanging out with the wrong crowd. And the next thing you know, he starts dealing drugs in Laredo. And it's really an unbelievable uh, turn of events with him able to navigate his way through the Mexican cartel system. You, you know, one of the things Gary sort of alluded to, uh, Fred, in this report was the violence that La Barbie was engaged in. I mean, it, it sounded, some of it sounded awful. Some of what I was reading as well. He was a real force to be reckoned with, uh, wasn't he? What did you make of that? It's truly a brutal world that they're living with, and uh, you rule by fear, and the only way you're going to get any kind of support in that world is to, in essence, execute your enemy. Uh, you have to rule with an iron fist, and you can't be afraid not to kill especially to send that signal to your rivals. And they would send videotape messages, I understand, uh, back and forth uh, uh, with evidence of some of these gruesome killings. Uh, but, but something, uh, you know, there were reports indicating uh, that there was no firefight between Mexican authorities and La Barbie when he was captured. Did that surprise you? The most interesting thing to me in looking at that is, uh, especially in light of the revelation that he had been an informant for the Mexican government for two years is it's our intelligence indicates that he just turned himself in so he cut a deal and in hmm. essence uh, uh, he's going to turn a government witness so he turned a deal probably was you think that's because he's fearful of what's happening with the cartels or some retaliation from from other cartels there was no good ending to this story either he had to turn himself in or he knew he was going to end up being killed in a hail of gunfire. So in essence, yeah. uh, by being an informant, uh, he has gained his freedom from Mexico and would be extradited to the United States. And it would not surprise me in the least to see him testify against many other drug lords. How, how valuable do you think the information that he provides will be? He's an extraordinarily valuable source from that standpoint. He's going to be able to tell DEA and the Department of Justice how they launder their money, uh, intimate personnel knowledge of how these organizations work, uh, how they kill. He literally knows where the bodies are buried. Well, it'll be interesting uh, to see what comes of that, and he is going to be extradited to the United States, as we mentioned. Fred Burton, thanks so much for your insights. Thank you.